literally like I think calisthenics have saved my life because I think I might be like maybe in jail or maybe not alive or something like that. Like I, back in the day, I, I was, wasn't doing anything smart. Yogurulas, welcome to the next episode of the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gornation. My name is Phil and today we have a special guest from Latvia. You're a content creator, you're a competitive athlete and I'm really happy to have you here, Paul, from Latvia. Hi, everybody. Nice. And today we will talk a little about your story, about your, uh, your workout, um, your life in general. And uh, yeah, I'm already looking forward to it. Thanks that you take the time. And yeah, we will get right into the questions if you're okay with that. Yeah, okay. Thank you for the invitation, by the way. Nice. So um, somebody comes towards you and asks you, yeah, who are you? Like, how do you present yourself? Uh, who are you, Pauls? If somebody asks me that, I straight up say I'm a regular guy. Yeah. I don't like to like tell them about my like social medias or working out because like that's my it's not my main thing that I do with my life like it's a hobby but it's like more based like I surround my life with with that but I don't tell that that's the main thing that you can think about me when I when you see me so like if they really ask me like detailedly like where I have competed or what I have achieved I maybe say that usually I say like I'm just a regular guy who likes to do like bar tricks and that's it. Okay. So, um, yeah, like calisthenics is a, is a hobby, but it's not like, uh, it's part of your life, but it's not the, the main thing in your life um, as it is for a lot of athletes. Yeah. Like I could say, like, I'm really serious about like competing maybe and stuff like that. But I also like have a regular job. I, I have like f other friends that don't do this sport. Like usually when I uh, like, meet somebody that does this sport every single one of their friends are only doing this sport <laughs> i have like friends who does music who does like dancing and different other things so like my life fully don't surround us around only working out it's like doing friends stuff as well like also working family time and stuff like that okay so like uh, you also have other hobbies like what what do you do uh, apart from calisthenics street workout it's like I like to like do every possible sport like that I can get my hands on. Like literally, like I'm not not maybe it's not gonna be maybe on a professional level, but I like just to move to like stay healthy, stay in shape, and just move around because like I I don't see like calisthenics is, is gonna get you fit. But it's not gonna keep you like you you can't work on your cardio that good if you do calisthenics. You can get muscle strength, statics, and stuff like that, but if you want cardio endurance and stuff like that you need to run you need to move in different ways and stuff like that because you think it's it's uh, important for the health right uh, to yeah do it's important for the health yeah cardio is important as well because like it's underrated also in this sport if you focus on cardio it's going to help you in competing because yeah like multiple times before the competitions if i have done extra cardio it has helped me to like go further in in combos usually like every other athlete their endurance runs out and they're like they can't do anything else so, yeah i've been there too so that's why i try to focus also on the car a little bit okay so, yeah. so for you if calisthenics wouldn't exist like at all um what what sport would be your main sport main sport oh i need to think about it okay like i need to take it way back to understand Yeah, before, like, I did calisthenics, I did skateboarding. So pretty much because I found out about calisthenics, I stopped skateboarding at all. So I would probably stick to that till this day, if it would be like that. Okay. Yeah, also, I also have done, like, I think every every possible sport when I was little, but, like, I stick to calisthenics. I don't know why, like, <laughs> I liked it. I liked it the best. But, yeah, like, it was 10 years ago or something when I started. So it's been some time. 10 years 10 years like this summer yeah literally this summer it's 10 years when i started 10 uh -huh. years ago because like in latvia it came earlier than every other con country because like latvia started to organize world championships first uh and yeah pretty much i saw like first and second world championship in latvia and third also the first three ones were organized in latvia i saw them pretty much picked it picked it up from there so yeah. Crazy. And it's pretty popular. 
pretty, pretty popular over here because like when you if somebody is gonna see you doing like pull-ups on the bars or something or some tricks they're gonna be like oh, yeah that's three workout like and they're confident like they everybody knows okay so first a question do, do people in latvia say street workout or calisthenics what is more and more known uh we say street workout because it got like uh, advertised like it mm -hmm. because uh calisthenics as i understand calisthenics is mostly like body weight exercises that's how i understand like everybody has has their own opinions but it's yeah. body weight training in my opinion and street workout it's it's like doing in the regular park doing like more advanced moves like handstand push-ups 90 degree push-ups dynamics other static moves like stuff like that it's it's way much more than just basics calisthenics in my opinion is basics how you achieve the uh, physical like endurance and like strength okay that's so weird like if if i could change like a few things in calisthenics and go back in time i would like change the definitions because it's so weird mm -hmm. that there is calisthenics and street workout for and for everybody it means something else like for some people it's the same for some people it means mm -hmm. something completely different and it's yeah. weird i use both like if people like ask, uh, ask me straight away like what are you doing i'd say both i say street workout and calisthenics and then, then they they ask like the explanation of both i explained them and also like i saw a documentary or mini short film from uh, bar sparta crew from in, uh, uh, united kingdom and they had like the ex literal explanation they told uh, calisthenics comes from greek word calisthenos and it, i think it means beauty of strength or something like that yeah. So yeah, pretty much it was body weight training that came from way 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 back okay nice so i would be interested in uh, going back to 2010 like uh, 10 years back when you started calisthenics how did you get in touch with the sport like how well, did it have the 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 power to get you back away from skateboarding okay the skateboarding it was like pretty much how i spent time with my friends and we were doing like nothing good we got in trouble like did did like all of dumb things that kids do these days you know and uh pretty much first time i saw them on tv it was like the literally the guy who made the federation world street workout calisthenics federation maris legend uh, mm -hmm. he and his team performed in like you could say it's like latvia's got talent it got called differently but it's pretty much latvia's got talent mm -hmm. so they compete and competed and got first place i think yeah they got first place and uh, they want some money and they spend the money to like build some parks around uh, my hometown riga and uh, yeah pretty much that's how i saw them and later on they they started to tour touring around the schools around latvia mm -hmm. so pretty much they came one day with the whole team they came to our school and performed and that's how i saw saw street workout first time first time like uh, in action but those were the tricks that i saw first time i have done like body weight training since i i remember myself i have done like handstands against the wall since i was like three like handstand walks since first grade push-ups like pull-ups everything like because like my father he went to army he did that stuff in army so he when i was little he he did that also in home so i also joined him and did also Okay, so you did like body weight exercise, uh, be, be uh, like be next to skateboarding, but skateboarding was not like your sport, like to to be fit or something. It was just your lifestyle, your way of spending time with yeah. your with your friends. Yeah, exactly, it was like something that you can like put working and actually achieve something. Yeah, like that was like my first experience, like that I did. I also have done like team sports or something like that, but never stuck to it. Like did like a couple of months and then quit uh yeah also i remember like in my like primary school days also like we had pull-up bars in front of a school it's like since ussr days like since russia uh, russia was influ influenced over like latvia like literally we we had pull-up bars in front of a school we like did did like uh pull-up ladders in the no school break <laughs> yeah we did pull up ladders i remember like everybody does one pull up everybody does two and stuff like that it was how we used to spend time back in the day that's why it's so common like in latvia like that's why because everybody's like i could say like every other 
person who also goes to gym, they also does pull-ups in Latvia because like it's that common. It's popular out here in Europe, in Baltics in general. Yeah. That's so like, it's so interesting how a state and like, uh, like a state can influence the, the health and the fitness of the people and the mindset. Like uh, I was also talk to uh, talk to John Piero from Venezuela uh, uh, and he's like, also everybody does a body weight workout everywhere. There are pull-up bars uh, like on the school pl uh, place in front of the schools, etc. cetera, to, for the uh, children to stay fit. But like in, in Germany, there is not something like this. Like, um, and like uh, you aren't evil, even allowed as an adult A person to go on a, a playground for children and do your training there because it's for children and it's wow. like legally uh, reglemented so yeah it's it's really interesting um so latvia is yeah, also an active country right uh, where yeah it's i think it's a part of like uh mari's success that he like made this federation and did the world championships and it's also because like i think in the countries that there is like the most poverty there's going to be the most like Uh, equipment outdoors so yeah. you can train like you because it like it keeps people out of trouble if you train like you get your head straight during that thing like literally like I think calisthenics have saved my life because I think I might be like I don't know maybe in jail or maybe not alive or something like that like I, back in the day I, I was wasn't doing anything smart <laughs> yeah so like um calisthenics you see it today as you saw skateboard back then that it's like your uh, style of uh, spending time with your friends or is there a difference uh it's more like it's literally to keep me in shape to like uh, also to to travel the world i really enjoy when i compete outside of my country like i yeah. really enjoy to traveling uh also like I try to like not push myself too much as an athlete like recently because uh, back in the day I used to put so much pressure on myself even though I wasn't in the level to compete with the other guys. Okay. Yeah, that's why I have like separated myself from like competing a little bit so I can straighten my head and like work on my statics because it's my weak weak part, weak link because like you saw me like in Sweden when when I competed against Dan. Yeah. Like I literally like my statics are like not good so i need to work on that and then maybe i'll come back to competing like and maybe we'll see how far i can go so, yeah but pretty much calisthenics like it's like big part of my life but it, at this time it's not not the main thing okay doing multiple things at the same time because i can imagine that the pressure that if you can't uh if you have maybe the wrong mindset it's hard to uh to not put pressure on you if you perform and like and you train with high performance people you know like uh, yeah. it's really hard to to um yeah to be the one who says yeah like calisthenics is nice it's my way of living i like to to perform etc but it's not like the main thing and i don't define myself as with uh, about my performance so like how do you how is this possible Oh, it's, it's really hard because, like, it took so much, like, self-improvement to, like, understand that I'm not, like, I couldn't not actually, I can't call, call myself an athlete because I can't, co like, compete with the top guys. Like, I, I can compete with Dan. Dan is, like, literally at top, but, like, still I'm under, under his level. Like, Daniels, like, I train, train most of my time with him, but still it's, like, the things that he does, it seems impossible to me. So I can't compete, like, They're at the pro level, maybe I'm mid tier level or something. I could say, yeah, like I do, like I try to like uh, raise the level for myself, but it takes so much work. Also, like to keep yourself in check so your deep ego don't comes in your way. Like usually, the youngsters as well, like they start to do dynamics and then then they need to start to do statics, but their ego say no, do do only dynamics. It's It's more enjoyable like, yeah. because it's like statics are hard. Like if you want to achieve statics, like every time when I see somebody who like does really clean statics, like I really can enjoy it because I see how much hard work it takes to like, achieve everything. Because I've been struggling like with planches and front levers for like maybe past four years or maybe more. Like I can hold them, but not for a long time. I'm not the strongest guy. I, like there's like peak, peak 
peak points that I can hold a little bit full planche, and then there's moments that I can barely do straddle planche, stuff like that. Like back in the day, I could do a little bit one arm front lever, but like it disappeared with time because I stopped focused on that. Because like I pretty much, you need to like also stay complete, not only focus on one thing. Because like I think that's literally the one thing that always have helped me that I have learned from Daniels, like you need to stay complete. I'm not the strongest guy, but some of the times I go against stronger guys and I, I can win against them because I can put dynamics and statics together pretty well. Okay. And you said like um, statics, uh, as I understood it, statics, you need to put more time in it. Is it like, uh, yeah. is, it, is it right? So like dynamics are easier to learn or like take yeah. less time? and static just it depends it depends on the person actually like it's how you work with yourself as well like statics it really takes time like if you see a guy who like can hold full planches and stuff it probably took like a year or three maybe from one to three years to get to that level from to full planche and dynamics is literally you can like achieve 360 like in one in one session you can get 540 in one session it depends depends on yourself like some some people like they like to take their time with dynamics and like get them clean with with literally with the first time that they train they to take their time take a week or maybe a month depends and also like if you try to also run like through those elements like a lot of people they start to do dynamics straight they need to do a swing 360 they don't try to even achieve like over the bar over the bar jumps jumps on the bar like basics total basic dynamics they don't know that and that's why the swing 360 it's harder for them and it takes more time for them if you go like in the level of the dynamics like you need to take your time to polish the easier moves so the harder ones are easier for you that's why usually everybody is shocked when me or daniels or anybody who's on in the top level they're shocked that we can do like dynamics simply jump off the bar and we're we don't feel anything from that. It's because we have done basics so much that the advanced moves are easier for us. But there's also like the guys who who does 720s and 900s and they're way above me and I don't understand how they do, does that. <laughs> okay, and like what are the, the main elements that you need to have to do dynamics? Is it like a strength thing? Is it mindset? Like uh, being not afraid? Is it uh, technique? What is... Uh, you need basics that's for sure like like you won't be able to catch the bar with the first attempt if your grip strength is not st strong enough mm -hmm. so the grip strength is really really important you need some basics i could advise like to at least get to 10 5 to 10 muscle ups before you do dynamics at all mm -hmm. it's like you need explosive power as well a lot of people don't know that they straight up jump to dynamics and they're like surprised how they do it and how i can't yeah. You need to do like I don't know explosive push-ups, muscle-ups, everything. Like you need to do that. So it's it's gonna be easier for you if you get your explosive strength up. Dynamics comes easier to you because like first like I think five maybe years to si five to six years that I did street workout, I only did basics and like minimal statics like handstands and stuff like uh, flagmans, back levers, stuff like that. And when I started started to do dynamics, I progressed really fast, and everybody was like, "How did you do it?" Yeah. I told them like basics is the key and the technique is also like very important thing like pretty much when I when I learned my 360s I learned them with wrong form and a couple of years later later I had to redo relearn my form mm -hmm. so I can do them better and do multiple 360s so yeah form is really important like also like if you want to learn dynamics you need to like if you see somebody doing it really good check those videos like you need to memorize how to do it properly and then it goes into your muscle memory that you can easily do it without without problems and is it better to to start dynamics with bad form first but catch it or is it better to just start with clean form from the beginning on so, so like in my opinion start with bad form because like a lot of people are afraid to grab it with bad form that's why it takes so long time. Grab it with bad form first, but okay, you don't don't go too crazy and don't uh, injure yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, but 
start with the form you can do and then work up to the better form because like everybody try to do like perfect form and they fall and like it takes it takes energy firstly like when you want to do explosive you, like you drill one move for a certain extent of time it takes a toll on your body and also on your mental state if you fail all the time you're not going to be able to like land the move yeah. that fast like but if you say fuck it let's go i want to do it like with a couple of times like the form is, has to be sacrificed if you want to go faster than it. but okay everybody has their own opinions that's how i do it okay start with the bad form and then move up to better form. okay basics first um then uh like bad form dynamics and then you move on like uh to to good form un uh, until yeah. you you cleaned everything up yeah exactly also it's, it goes same to like statics as well like you need to start with basics because like a lot a lot of guys i can see they're like literally they can barely do some push-ups and then they're already trying to do tuck planches yeah. and stuff like that and i'm like it's not gonna go far far in my opinion yeah. in those moments get it so um something that i would be interested in is your surrounding yourself with uh, some some of the top athletes uh, like not only in in your home country and in your uh, trainings um, but also when you travel so uh, is there what are the habits what are the what is the stuff that uh, professional athletes do that like beginners don't do and this is why they stay beginners or like intermediate athletes like Are there some habits, some similarities between the athletes, why they are so good? Uh, I could say like the mindset, like because like mindset is the main thing. If you don't have a mindset, like like might as well don't do it pro in a professional level. Like first thing, if you want to do it, get your mindset right and then start. Because like when I started to, to, to try to do this in professional level, like I don't know if it, if I'm professional or something, but yeah. When I started to do it like more seriously, like I didn't have the right mindset, and that's why it took like took a lot of time to like understand where I'm at. Because when you start, you need to literally break everything down: what you're able to do, what you're not able to do, and understand what you need to work on, mm -hmm. and be aware of what you're able to do and not able to do. It's the main thing, like to understand if you can do some moves. Or, and be able to use them in the competitions as well. But the mindset is the main thing. I, could, I have seen like Daniel's train, Dan train, uh, Xavier, like a lot of my friends that I, I'm close with from calisthenics community, their mindset is crazy. Like literally they can be like four hours training like one move. They don't care, they, they're gonna spend a lot of time just to achieve it. Like the mentality is like to get where you want to be. Like literally you need to work hard for it. Like if you want to be there, just work your ass off. Pretty much like that. Okay. Like work your ass off, but also know what you're capable of and know what you're not capable of. Because something that exactly. I see also a lot of on competitions for people who are on their first competition, on their third competition, like really beginners uh, in competitive street workout, they start with a move that you that they don't feel comfortable with, that you see that they like off they often fail their first move. And of course it's because of adrenaline. But I think it relates to the point that you say, know that what you're capable of, be really sure, work your ass off to really make one move sure, do it like for a few hours until you always catch it. Yeah, that's why usually like if you see some pro athletes, they don't fail those moves because they have done like the million times they have yeah. like, they have it back in their heads. They can't, they literally can't fail. If they do, it's like, technical faults some maybe not enough chalk or maybe the bar is slippery or something like that it's like yeah usually like i don't know in the competitions usually when i fail it's like if i'm fatigued if i'm not in shape correct shape that i used need to be when i compete maybe i'm too fatigued and i can't land the move but literally if if i go on the first round if i need to do a 540 or something i shouldn't fail at all because like I have drilled it so much times that it's really easy for me. So the main thing for the like beginners, they need to like drill their moves and don't don't try to do anything too advanced because I I have done it multiple times and I and I have learned from that. If you like do too advanced moves in the beginning, like you're not gonna last in the competition. You're gonna 
get fatigued and in the one moment you won't be able to continue okay okay crazy um what are the moves that you know by heart that you could do like when i say pulse do uh, do this now you could always do it in single move single yeah. move yeah just single uh, sing move. dynamics like pick any trick in dynamics that i can do like literally if you tell me i can do it like okay. singles it's easy if you do combos okay then i will fail maybe it depends on the on the combination but 540s gangers skin the catches 360s like if you call me out i can do it okay. like also dan dan usually does this to me when he comes to latvia <laughs> to your molokup stage he's like paul do a ganger <laughs> i'm like do you really need it he's like come on let's go then i do it it's it's like like if you drill it that much you shouldn't be afraid at all like you need to be confident also the confidence is one thing because like i know also there's a lot of guys and girls that they have drilled the move a lot and i in my opinion i think they can do it but the confident confidence is not there and then because of the confidence that they're lacking they're not able to do the move okay okay That's like for, for dynamics. We talked a lot about dynamics, but I still um, would like to know your, uh, your planche journey. Like, uh, how did it go? When did you start? Uh, like, was it always like this? Or did you have some setbacks, injuries? And that's, that's I think, like most of the things because my, like, my planche, it's been spiraling up and down all the time. And uh, it's partly, it's like, injuries partly it's like losing motivation partly it's like uh, changing of plans usually like when i stop training planches literally before the competition when the competition starts like i take three to four weeks before the comp and start to prepare it depends on the competition also and uh, yeah and after the competition i'm so tired that i don't get back to my routine and then the uh, some time passed and I, i'm like oh i sh should have like gone back to the gone back to the routine and like you lose strength in that part after the competition if you skip skip your training after the competition you can you might be able to losing your aesthetics also it's like i'm really anxious when i train i like i like to do everything i do like <laughs> my workouts are really random like Sometimes you will see that I tell somebody, okay, today is a plunge day and that I end up doing front lever. <laughs> like, okay. I'm, I'm not, I might not be the most consistent one. Also, consist consistency is really important. I'm lacking on that, but I'm working on myself, like I'm trying to do consistent, consistent workouts. Yeah, the injuries is mo the most, 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 I think, popular one that everybody is stopping the progressing. Uh, they're getting injured and yeah when i was in sweden i was injured back yeah. then when i battled then and i was actually surprised that i could still hold planche yeah because really like surprised. you said my yeah i'm i'm injured like my planche it, it will it really sucks but i it, the 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 people didn't see it and i didn't see it like it was like it was stable yeah my, like literally dan everybody at the comp they came up to it i mean like dan paul i fi finally see some progress from you and i'm like like i was like injured b before then i was like maybe a little bit stronger but still i'm like it's nice to hear it when you're injured that you feel that you're not confident and they boost your confidence so yeah that is it takes a lot of time and patience and also don't overtrain yourself when you work on statics and basics and dynamics as well You can get yourself out of the game really fast if you overdo something and injure yourself pretty, 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 pretty badly. And what do you do uh, nowadays to prevent injuries? Oh, I take more rest days. I don't trade that that much. Like back in the day, I used to go crazy. Like me and Daniel, we used to like do workouts almost every day of the week. Like we literally, but like in 2015, we started to train together. Pretty much it was like almost every day for like the most of the days I allowed myself to take rest. It was like maybe two or three. And it was for like a couple of years that we like did it like that. Wow. And also like I trained through injuries because I wasn't aware that I'm actually injured. I felt some pain. It was not com comfortable, but actually it was an injury. Wow. So like I trained through injuries as well. It, it's not the smartest move. 
yeah, also like you need to educate educate yourself through when you work out. Like if most of the people are not aware of what what they're doing, what what their body is at, stuff like that. Take deload weeks, take rest days, do everything. Plan your workouts. That's the most important thing. Plan your workouts. Don't do them randomly. If you do them randomly, you're gonna your ego is gonna get in the way, and you're gonna injure yourself. That's from my personal experience. And how do you educate yourself? What what possibilities are there to to learn and to educate? Uh, there's multiple, like YouTube, number one. Like everything that I have learned about this sport, like everything about like training and stuff like that, everything comes from YouTube. And people are all on, also underestimating the power of internet. Yeah, pretty much everything is free on internet, right? And that a lot of people are selling programs. Like you can make your own program, but to, a lot of people like likes to buy them instead. Yeah. I think you need to educate yourself because like the programs are a good thing if you buy them, but you also then you need a trainer so who keeps you in line also. If you go by someone's routine, you need them to train you because you're not gonna be able to see yourself from the from other perspective perspective. Yeah, that's true. Like uh, I yeah. see programs, it's it's sometimes it's useful because it's like a shortcut, and you ha don't have to search everything up by yourself on on YouTube. Maybe you find something uh, like a bad workout plan by somebody who's like like didn't do it himself, um, mm -hmm. or just work for him. But like in general, you're right. Like everything you find everything in on YouTube, everything like for everything, everything. is in internet. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Also, like programs are really good but you might as well edu educate yourself if you tr take this serious educate yourself you need to know this, know this stuff because if you know this stuff you know how to like get better progress after all because like the human body is really difficult to understand yeah so like when you when you look up why you uh, like why you should do like 10 pull ups for three sets like you understand why why it's important to do 10 pull ups and not just somebody who uh, tells you in a plan do 10 pull ups um, so yeah i get what you mean like you understand more of the body the training systems etc when you look up everything by yourself um, but it's like yeah it's it takes some work yeah exactly but also from the other side i understand from the uh, financial aspect like it's cheaper to like buy a program and try to do it yourself than actually like pay some coach or somebody to teach you that stuff. Like that there's a big money difference between between maybe 30 euro or dollar like program or like 10 sessions with your coach. Yeah, like it's it's completely different. So I understand those people who prefer doing pro buying programs. That's true. Like, and uh, we didn't talk about what you work. Like, what do you do in 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 your life? What is uh, the life of Pulse look like? Usually, like at this point in my life, I'm studying, still studying, and I'm doing like basic nine to five. It don't differ from everybody. I'm still trying to understand where I'm going in my life because a lot of people like it seems that everybody has their life figured out. And I like a lot of people still like DM me on Instagram or something. They're like, come on, do more content, do more content yeah. and stuff like that. And I don't define myself as a content creator because like usually the most content that, that I post are made by somebody else. I think the content creator, they, most, most of them, the content creators, they create themselves. They have their own cameras, uh, every equipment, they do it by themselves. But usually like there's like Daniel helping me like, other guys from our squad that they have cameras or something. I edit myself, but like they help me with the process. So yeah, but uh, also I like pretty much this is how I, this is how to explain. It's fun for me like to train, like to do content and stuff like that. That's how I like spend my time. Like I, I enjoyed it, enjoy it. And I try to not to push to, put too much pressure on myself with the content because like usually like you have like social like anxiety about content creating because like everybody's in this sport like the top guys everybody's oh, I need to be consistent to like get where I'm at with the posts no you need to train consistent because like this sport is about competing not about like social medias like 
a lot of people like they take social media too seriously even though they're athletes in the first place but yeah social media is i don't like i plan to take it more seriously but like first i need to do some other things like to understand if i really want it okay. because I, it's it's really difficult to be consistent with the content creating like especially for an athlete because everybody tries to post like three pictures a week like uh, with one video in a week but they still show the same stuff they don't show progress they show different edits but the same same things in those videos and it bec it has become a norm i think is in our sport like everybody expect except expect you to like post like literally every other day mm -hmm. And I'm taking some time off from social media because, like, it gets me anxious. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't yeah. like it that much, that much that I get anxious because, like, I don't get the job get get the job done when I need to. So I take some time off to like work on myself. When I achieve something new, then I'm gonna post something. I'm gonna do it like that because it's it's a struggle to do like. I've seen Daniels doing it. I've seen Dan Dan doing it. Like they're the so like the guys that are like trying and doing like in the in the top level like the content creating in our community in like in freestyle community in general and it takes so much time you need to sit hours in front of a in front of a pc and edit and it, when you film most of the time you the videos that you get or maybe pictures you get they're not as good as you expected and so you need to scratch that and do new ones so that's a lot of work and it's like I don't know if I'm as passionate as them about videography or photography or stuff like that but I, I, I enjoy like the whole like the community movement that the, we push everything through social media mostly because like pick any other street sport that has like big numbers on social media that they post videos and stuff like that like I, I don't know, like uh, any other sport. Like this sport is special because of the social media. So yeah, and also, also like I think Daniel is a big part of big, like this whole this whole uh, movement that we post combos, like crazy amounts of combos, like content. Like everybody does it. Also, like Eric Ortiz, he's also doing like crazy a lot of like content. Small Spartan from. UK as well like the top dogs they're like most of them are doing like social media influencing as well and that's a big thing because like the most if we get this sport like uh, presented to more people it's gonna get more popular and it's gonna get like better in the level as well and also like people are gonna be able to like earn a living out of it after all so for you it's most mostly a tool to make it like more uh, known to the people and to spread the sport, but it's not like uh, a part of your life or like. Uh... Uh, I'm about to like do something, but I don't want like a sp spoil it. Maybe you'll see in some time that I'm okay. uh, working on something with my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like for me, I like to like spread the positivity, like to, to train. Back in the day, I also used to be a personal trainer. But I switched because, like, it takes so much energy from you if you want to train yourself and train some somebody else. It takes a lot of energy, and yeah, then that's why also like I admire those people who are like personal trainers and they compete in the high level. Yeah, like also Dan Rosenberg. Also, he's a personal trainer. He tra uh, competes himself. Yeah. Also, small Spartan from. Uh, UK also, he's a personal trainer, he competes. He also was like WCO featherweight champion, if I'm not mistaken. Like, there are guys that are doing it and it's, it's crazy how they can make it work because like, it takes a lot of energy. That's true. But it's interesting, like uh, in, the, in the intro I said, yeah, the, the content creator and competitive athlete. And yeah. in this interview, you now said like, these are the two things that I don't decide, def uh, define myself with. Uh, but like yeah. the image that you that people get uh, on social media from you uh, is like diff uh, different to what you define yourself uh, with. And uh, like you say, you're a regular guy, but 
Uh, yeah, today we have a regular guy. <laughs> <in the interview. laughs> yeah. yeah, because like, I, I think I'm a regular guy. Like, yeah, I do specific stuff, but I'm not in that level. So I can tell like, I'm a like professional calisthenics athlete. I don't tell it because I don't earn a living out of it. That's the thing. Like most of the guys, they're like, oh yeah, I want to become professional calisthenics athlete. Like, and I ask them, what do you mean with it? Like compete in the world championships on, or earn a living out of it? They say, earn a living out of it. Then I'm like, it's almost impossible. Like everybody's still working for that. Yeah. Maybe the top, top guys, they get, get to like earn the living, but they also, they sell programs. They sell merch. They like have sponsorships and stuff like that. You need to work by yourself on your, uh, on your like also on social medias like you need to do multiple mul multiple things at the same time so you can earn a living through this sport but literally you won't be able to like earn a living this day if you want to be just an athlete do nothing at the same time like it's hard like but still i i can see like the gordon nation via 40s these companies are coming up really fast and i think in next maybe five to ten years there's going to be professional athletes that they're everybody's like that competing there's gonna earn a living out of it because this is this sport is earn, growing really fast yeah that's true like this is uh this has to be the goal uh, of everything that we do because uh yeah as you said it, it's not uh like being a personal trainer sucks energy And of course, it helps people. But uh, if you want to define yourself as a competitive athlete, uh, it's not good to be a personal trainer at the same time. You know, imagine like Cristiano Ronaldo, or Lionel Messi being like obligated to do pers uh, personal trainings by side. And uh, yeah, it's, that's that has to be the goal. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. That's why you don't see like like literally the guys who have been like world champions, like Daniel, Eric Ortiz. Like in those days, as I know, in those days when they like uh, climbed, climbed up the ladder to like to be the world champion, they weren't personal trainers because like you need to put so much focus on yourself that you can't be able to focus on anybody else. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, okay, so like one last question I have about... Um, dynamics because it's something that uh, a lot of people are interested in and then we come to an end uh, of the interview so yep. uh, like how long did it take for you to to learn uh, different skills like uh, let's start with the with the shrimp flip or like uh, the uh, skin the catch i think you call it skin the catch yeah in europe it's more known like uh, skin the catch but in usa I've, i've heard that they use more shrimp flip okay and yes uh, yeah sorry Yeah, yeah I think so. pretty much it took me three times to land it the first time but like to literally achieve it it took me maybe about a week like to have to have it locked down that i can do it almost every time okay. yeah it took me a week one about week. week and the, the yeah. five 540 oh 540 came really easy that's why that was that's why i'm doing it all the time it came really easy I don't remember. It was like literally also with the third time I landed it. And I think I unlocked it with the third time as well. Wow. Literally, it took me maybe maybe one session or something like that. I remember Daniel told me like, okay, go for the <laughs> 540 because you've been doing 360 for too long. Like you need something new. I was like, okay, tried it first time. Like had good rotation, didn't have the height enough. So he that told me like get more height. Second time I hit my hands against the bar, I was like, okay, this is possible. I need to go for it. And the third time I like I landed it. Wow. Crazy. So yeah, like like if if you have like the you can't be afraid if you want to learn something. Like you have to get that mentality. Also, you'll need to learn how to fall. If you fall incorrectly, you can injure yourself. But if you learn how to fall, it's not gonna take also energy out of you. It's not gonna yeah drain you that, that much okay and uh ganger ganger oh that one i relearned it like a couple of times as well but like it also took me maybe a couple of sessions like every single like every single like 540s everything it took me a couple of sessions to pick wow. it up because i have seen it before like 
Daniel threw it so much times in front of my eyes that I have something to like prepare myself. Like, okay, I understand the technique by just by looking at him every every session when we train together. So it was easier for me to l- learn it. If you train by yourself, if you don't have something to like have an example, it's gonna be way harder. Yeah. Like for me, like I had them already back then. He was like Daniel was like third in the world in calisthenics freestyle so it was he was really advanced back then already so i pretty much copied copied and pasted the technique <laughs> from him okay and something that i also see i know it's like also a technique but um when a move gets normal for you because you see it every day um it's like not that oh this is the move that uh, nobody can do like you have a limit in your head but you see it every day you know um then it gets it gets easier i don't know if you saw the same phenomenon but uh w- since uh ikvan threw the uh the ice ball the front flip regrab on the yeah. at the world of bar heroes competition like everybody does the front flip regrab like it feels like this it's not of course it's yeah. not uh objective but um you know it's he he threw it and after then like it's it got more normal and when it's normal yeah. it's easier Yeah, I've seen, like, I think even before then in Latvia, we had already a couple of persons that they were doing from flip grab. Because, like, first you need a, a, a person who's example also. Like, if you see a guy who who's doing it with a good technique, you're going to be, okay, this seems easier. When you see a good technique, it looks easier. If somebody's going to do it with bad technique, it seems harder. So if you if you see somebody doing it easily, it's like okay, it might not be that hard. I should try it. And then you try some couple of times, then you hit your fingers against the bar and you're like, okay, I can land it probably and just need to send it in that moment. Either yeah. you land it or you land on fail army and get paid for uh being in a in a gym. Literally. Uh, <laughs> in literally, a like workout failed. Yeah, literally. <laughs> or a friend Christophs, he f- failed in yeah. the uh, We we judged the competition in Estonia, and yeah. he failed on his face. He literally wow. got paid from that. He he f- fell really hard, but he got failed. He got paid from that footage. So it's either way win-win situation. <laughs> <laughs> but this fail, I remember it. Like seeing it on Instagram, it was so uh, it was so hard to watch. Like, yeah, yeah. But that's that's the game of dynamics, I guess. Yeah, it comes with the territory, I guess. Like if you get hurt, like. You just need to pick yourself back up and continue doing it. Sure. Okay. So um, we're coming to an end, and I have some uh, some quick questions, quick answers at the end. Um, what do you prefer, uh, pizza or burger? Burger. Burger. Okay. Burger every day. <laughs> and do you prefer dogs or cats? I think I we heard a, a dog in the beginning, so you're having dog. A dog. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dog. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, and your favorite location for holidays that you've ever been to? Holidays. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know. Like travel in general. Ah, uh, travel in general. Yeah. Last, like, since I came back from New York, like I want to go back to the states. But if we don't take the states in consideration, then it's good. It's probably gonna be Spain because, like, the community is big out there. I wanna, like. Travel there and experience Spain. Okay, and you also speak some quite some languages, right? You uh, you speak Russian. Yeah, I uh, I talk a little bit Russian. Yeah, like because like in our country, half of the people talk Russian, so я могу говорить чуть-чуть по русски. So yeah, a lot of people also have a Russian surname, so a lot of people assume that I talk fluently in Russian. Yeah, I don't talk fluently. I can talk a little bit, but I can't read in that language because I I I learned German in school. So okay. I also can talk a little bit uh, German. So yeah. Okay. So foreign country, uh, foreign languages, uh, English, uh, a little bit of Russian, and a little bit of German. Yes, exactly. Nice. So yeah, if you have more languages that you know, it it helps you a lot when you're yeah. traveling. When I went to the Russia to World Championship, literally, almost anyone like can't talk in in English in Russia so you need to know some Russian if you travel there yeah also like if you go to like USA you need English if you don't know English you're gonna get lost yeah like, but yeah languages are the key that's right nice. 
So, um, your favorite calisthenics athlete? Who favorite calisthenics athlete? This is gonna come like to a shock to you, maybe, or yeah. anybody else that are watching. Uh, there's this guy who won uh, Burning Gate competition uh, last year. His name is uh, Emmanuel. I don't know his surname. I don't know his surname, but he's really strong in statics. Okay. Like when I saw, I was shocked. I was like, "Damn, this really made me want to like train my statics." Okay, crazy. I will. Uh, you can send me his Instagram afterwards, and we can put yeah. him in the descriptions for everybody who's interested uh, in in this crazy yeah. uh, statics guy. So yeah. Yeah. Because like he's, I'm actually like literally, I don't understand this thing. Freestyle athletes get a lot of recognition, but statics guys don't get that much of a recognition. Uh, this guy, he won Burning Gate. I, I don't know how much he has followers, but yeah, like most of the freestyle athletes won't know him, but he's really crazy strong. So shout out to that guy. Okay. Maybe you can put his like uh, uh, Instagram tag on, yeah. the, on the screen, maybe in this inter interview. So yeah. everybody check him out. Yeah. I'll write this down. Yes. Um, so, uh, what would you like? What would change for you if social media just disappeared? I think it wouldn't change that much. I would still train. I would still like compete. I think if social media would disappear, the comp competitions would still like happen. I would still compete. Like my life would be the same. Like social media is not my main thing. That's why you don't see me posting that much on social yeah. media. Nice. Um, do you have a favorite book? Favorite book? Uh, I have this one book that I read recently. It's called, uh, uh, what was the name? Uh, the Way of Fuck It. It's named, it's named, it's about like mentality, like to yeah. not, not, uh, not be stressed about little things, like to focus on the like big goals in life and don't stress about it too much. Okay. Yeah, we will also put it in the description. I will ask you afterwards uh, about the, the, the exact name. Um, and the best calisthenics ev event you've ever been at so far? Oh, it's going to be a tricky question because like, it depends on the level and also on the organization level. If it would be like in the competing level, it would be World Cup finals in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2018. Yes, 18, I think. 2018 and uh, in organizing level the top competition would be beast of the bars that daniel fleffel organized that was my favorite competition like i loved every second of it like just to see that your friend organized a really high level event it like really enjoyed like i enjoyed it a lot yeah so it, somebody putting in the work that's true like he he just put so much passion in it and you felt that on the event so yeah yeah, um, exactly. And it's also the event where we got to know each other like yeah, personally. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. Big, big shout out to Daniel for this Daniel uh, Fleffel, yeah. Yeah, for this this exactly. great event. Nice. Um, and the last question: dynamics or aesthetics? Now it's a hard question, like because <laughs> like just because I can do dynamics in the kind of good good level, I I could pick that. But because I I can't do that much aesthetics, I could pick that. So pretty much. I'm on, on a limbo right now. I could say like dynamics would be because I'm recognized by it. I could say. Okay. So I pick dynamics. Nice. Perfect. So um, where can people get in touch with you? How can they reach you? How can they write you? Um, ask you something. Uh, uh, probably Instagram or Facebook. You can find me by my name or surname on Facebook and uh, also name and surname in Instagram. Perfect. So if you have any questions, the links are also down in the description. And uh, yeah, before you can end the episode and say goodbye to everyone, uh, I want to say thank you for listening till the end, because I know it's still uh, like already around about an hour of interview and I really deeply yeah, appreciate everyone. Yeah, like an hour, like it's insane. It ran so fast. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like if you listen to this till the end, crazy. I uh, hope you took some things with you. I uh, hope you enjoyed. And uh, like we, we are happy if you give us feedback, what could be better, what was good, rate the, the episode. And uh, yeah, just uh, tune in next time. And I want to say thank you also to you, Pauls, for taking the time. 
for being here, for answering the questions. And I'm off. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And you can end the episode to Pulse. Yeah. Thank you, Phil, for inviting me. Shout out to Gore Nation. Like, they're doing really good. good. Like, I enjoy everything, like equipment, stuff like that. We need more of this, like, movement that people are making businesses in this sport so we can also do more competitions. So, yeah, thank you for that. You're a big part of this community, to be honest. Like, a lot of people may not know, but Gore Nation is one of the top, like, leading companies, in my opinion, that are doing this right. So, yeah, thank you, Phil, for that. And uh, to everybody that, that is watching this, keep on working hard and probably see you sometime soon.